So like here I was having this amazing, fantastic relationship. And I had promised that at the beginning of the relationship, that at the end of one year, I would give an answer as to whether or not we would continue in the relationship to marriage. Or if I did not see marriage as where we would be, then I felt it was better that we should separate. And and so we had the first year, and as like, again, I've always said, before you're going to think about marriage, spend a year with that person. Get to know who they are. The whole buyer's remorse of guys who marry a Filipina because everything went great the first three, four months, so they just went ahead and got married, are the same guys who are, are now off with some side chick or whatever because they, they suddenly realize, oh, they either didn't want to get married to anybody or they didn't want to get married to that particular Filipina. So for that reason, I've always encouraged in, in my videos spend a year with someone in person not a year on Skype not a year LDR a year in person actually spending time with that person to know their moods and their preferences their priorities all of that so we we went through the first year and I reevaluated and I thought really long and hard about well what do I want to do with my life what do I want to do in the future what are my goals and everything and how do they fit in with this person's goals and all that and there were there were two things that came up uh, one one was travel. I knew that I wanted to see more of Southeast Asia. I mean, it was something that I really tried to give up. I really tried to tell myself, I just won't go. In order to keep this relationship, I just won't go. And because I'd already talked to her about the both of us going together, and she really is not interested. I mean, she would have been miserable being dragged all over the place. She wanted to see her parents on a regular basis. She wanted to keep her job, more of a sense of security and being in one place. And I understand that. And I respected it. And so I didn't... I could have. I could have said, hey, pack your things, we're going. And she probably would have followed me, but she would have been miserable. She would have hit it as best she could, but I know that she didn't want to be there and she would be counting the days to go back to do Maggetti. And I didn't want to do that to her. The other thing, and really at the core of all this, and this is where I really made, again, my mistake, and, and it cost me everything, was the whole baby issue, the whole kids issue. Because from the very beginning, before we even, I mean, literally during our first three days dating, I made it abundantly clear, I cannot make babies. Even if I could, I don't want a baby. I don't want to make any babies. I don't want to adopt any babies. I don't want to raise any kids. It's not negotiable at all. Now, she had said originally that she did want at least one, but after about four or five months together, we revisited the topic, and she said after thinking about it, she, in all sincerity, told me, well, if it means us being together, I could do without kids. I And her sister had gotten pregnant, later eventually had the baby, and, and, and she saw, well, I can focus my time on my niece and sort of fulfill that that void spending and she does she's she's very attached to her niece and stays active in her life and everything and so here i was trying to make a decision about the future whether we should get married and and make that commitment and everything and i kept rolling it through my head and i was like i kept asking myself does she really mean this does she really mean she loves me enough that she would actually forego having a child? So after the year, we revisited again everything, and I had to make a decision. Either we were going to commit and and be on the path to marriage and commitment, or I didn't want to waste her time, and it was better that if we weren't going to go to marriage, that the way I looked at it, every year she was after that with me was a year she lost being with someone else. And, and she was only 21 at the time when we met, so it's not like uh, even two, three years was going to take the prime of her life. But uh, again, she would still be 22 or 22 at the time when we broke up. So I, I promised I would give a decision. So I struggled really hard with it. And I, I talked to all my closest friends and I, I told them and I, what my situation was. And I got different answers and, and I really agonized for literally four months 
trying to make up my mind. I even got to the point where I started researching adoption. Uh, I thought, well, maybe I could maybe I could compromise on the kid thing and, and adopt a kid and she'd be happy and I'd just kind of get used to it. I, and, and then the idea of just settling down in one place and then going the whole white picket fence route. Now I got to get a house. Now I got to stay in Dumaguete. And now I'm... It, it, I finally, I looked at it all and what really kind of tipped the scales was my mistake. The final piece of data that I, I calculated in was I thought to myself, well, I'm sure she believes herself now, but when, because she's only 22, but is she going to feel this way when she's 29, when she's 32, when she's 35, or is she then going to feel the pressure of the clock ticking and completely change her mind and, and be this suddenly this woman who is telling me, I must have a baby. One way or another, we got to have a baby. A baby that I don't want to raise, a baby that isn't going to be mine, we would have a really serious problem. And I thought, I don't want to reach that day after we've invested so much emotionally into each other for so many years and made so many plans and commitments for the whole thing to get turned upside down because at 38 or 35 or 32, all of a sudden she wanted to have a baby. So it really gutted me. And I think this is the thing that uh, our breakup was very public and we didn't share information about it, but everybody knew that we broke up. And because they didn't know what was going on behind the scenes, a lot of people made a lot of assumptions and, and accusations and, and even a lot of slanderous things were thrown around. But I really didn't pay that much attention because it was really a gutting experience. It was it was it was like just being sliced in half down the middle and and having everything in my soul just torn out to be away from her. And it was it was you took very good care of her and I I I, I told her I said well I will continue to support you until you find someone else and I will continue to support your parents and I will I will help you. I gave her my scooter and I I did everything I could to help ease the pain of transition and we even spent a lot of time together we we after we broke up and after she moved out we kind of weaned it little by little and first we were having lunch every three three times a week and then twice a week and then once a week and and just learning to be independent again and and I told her the entire time I said well in October I'm going to move to Cebu so we'll have what time we have now so that you can get settled into your own boarding house which I paid for uh, for the year and the electricity I paid for that and plus support for her parents uh, I did that for the for the year and I, I told her well I'll continue to do that until you meet somebody I mean because she meant the world to me and and I, I didn't want to leave her hurting in any way other than what was avoidable was the emotional pain because we we were really fused our lives together and and so so anyways so I made the decision based on the mistake of the idea that all Filipinas want a baby. They're all going to want one eventually. And I'm sure you've heard this. Maybe you've even said this and believed it. But what I have learned in the years since the breakup with her is that it's not true. And all Filipinas do not want a baby. That You just got to accept that reality. I had to. And it's one that I didn't want to believe because if I believed that all Filipinas do not want a baby, it means I made a really huge mistake. And, and it took me two years to continue wrestling with that, uh, dealing with it. And I finally... Um, if you've ever given counseling or you've ever undergone counseling, one of the things they tell you is that you cannot move forward and improve on a mistake unless you own it. You have to understand that you truly blew it. You made a mistake. And once you do that, then you can improve it. But you can't skip that step. And it took me the better part of a year and a half to two years I kept coming mentally to the same conclusion, but I didn't want to accept it until about eight months ago. And, and even then, it was a process because I kept looking at more data that came in. One piece of data was the fact that I met three amazing, amazingly wonderful Filipinas who were in their mid-20s and early 30s who don't want kids. They just flat out told me. They're like, I hope you don't think I'm a bad 
person or a bad woman, but as we were having dinner and whatever with the, the different women, they just told me, they said, well, I don't want kids. She goes, and, and, and she almost felt bad saying it because in a Philippine culture, especially, women kind of look at her weird if she says something like that. But she really meant it. You know, she was like, one of them was uh, there in Cebu. She was, uh, I think, about 30, 34, 35 maybe. And she said, no, she, she was still unmarried. But she said, when I do get married, I want a man that doesn't want kids because she goes, I don't want to make any babies. Another one. Uh, same thing, also in Cebu. Uh, very successful woman, very attractive. Uh, she has a great boyfriend or whatever, but we became good friends. We talked. And same thing. She enjoys the business she works. She plans on getting married very soon to her boyfriend. They plan on doing some travel. They've already done some travel. But she's made it clear. No, I don't. I don't. She goes, I don't want to have kids. And he knows that. And so there was her. And then there was another one who is, again, very, very attractive. And she's early 30s. And now she said, well, if the man really, really, really wanted a baby, she goes, I, I could I could do that. Yeah. She goes, but if he didn't want kids or couldn't have kids, she goes, I'm totally OK with that, which surprised me because she is just the most giving, loving person, really sweet, really great personality. And so I, I over the last year or so, I've been again talking to these Filipinas and, and they're older. They're not 20 year olds talking hypothetically. They're already in their early 30s. They're in no rush to get be making a baby and and if again this is this is not just hypothetical for them. This is how they're living their life. They're in their early 30s. They haven't had a baby and they don't want to get a baby. So as I as I spoke with them and and I'm like, well, guy, this kind of this kind of this new data really throws a wrench in my whole decision making process back with my earlier relationship. I really had to look at myself and say. You should have believed her. You know, this whole misconception that all Filipinas want a baby. They're all going to change their mind. It wasn't true. It wasn't true. I should have. Again, the mistake I made is that when when I heard the sincerity behind her words, I, I should have believed her. I should have. But I didn't. And and I made the decision to separate. And, and now there is no fixing that. There is no going back. There is no none of that. Some things just can't be undone. The only thing that I can do and the only thing I can hope for you is that if you find yourself in that situation, remember there is no all. All Filipinas, all expats, all anybody are not one thing. You know, they're not. There is a spectrum. Some Filipinas, they don't just want kids. They want six of them. Does that mean all Filipinas want six kids? No. I've talked to other Filipinas and they've said they only want two kids. And I ask them, well, why, why only two? And they said, well, I want, I don't want an only child, but I don't want a whole bunch of kids. And I want to keep the expenses down because it costs money to raise kids. And, and I want to provide good for my two kids. So they're processing it and, and they've decided, yes, they want kids and they want exactly two kids. And then, like I mentioned, I've spoken with other Filipinas who have said they do not want kids. So when that thought crosses your mind, all Filipinas want babies, you really have to look at the word all and say, no, most Filipinas want babies. Many Filipinas want babies, but not all. And only you can discern when you're looking at the Filipina in front of you, only you hopefully can discern either she's speaking to you sincerely or it's possible you could be talking to a Filipina who wants to be with a foreigner so badly, she'll say anything. She'll say she doesn't have kids when she really does have kids. But that's a whole other matter. You're dealing with a Filipina who's not being honest. There are Filipinas who will say, oh, no, I don't have any kids. But then you get married. And then they say, oh, by the way, I, I just have these two kids that have been staying with my mom in the province. Or Filipinas that say, oh, no, I don't want kids. But they were lying the whole time. And again, once you're married, it's like, well, I want a baby. I want a baby. And and they're, they're it's like my mom says, when a woman wants a baby, she gets a baby. You know, she, she just stops taking the contraception. She, you know, she puts out whatever. I mean, she will get a baby one way or another. 
even if she has to go be with the guy next door, she's going to have a baby. So, but in those cases, you're dealing with a dishonest person. But when, when you are faced with a Filipina who loves you and is being honest with you and says directly in your eyes, I would rather be with you, even if it means not having babies, I'll do it. It's up to you to discern whether you can believe her or not. And I wish I could tell you always believe her or sometimes don't or what, but it really depends on, again, the sincerity of the woman standing in front of you. And in my case, I can only tell you that not believing her was the biggest mistake I ever made in the Philippines. Probably the biggest mistake I made in my life, really. And it has been, again, just soul crushing to have to accept that, that I blew it. I found who I was looking for. You know, I, I've talked to my close buddies and, and whenever I would describe the kind of woman I'm looking for, they'd say, oh, well, basically you're looking for a unicorn. Well, yeah, I found one and I blew it. And my hope is that you won't do the same. Yeah. Now, I'll end with this. And I've told this story a long time ago and I I think it, it, it bears reference to tell it again. Um, I was living in Dumaguete. And so anyway, so I met with this viewer. And I remember we were sitting there at this table there at the uh, Italian restaurant there. And and after we got done eating, um, he took out his phone. And he'd already been in the Philippines about three years. And he took out his phone and he started swiping, showing me all the pictures of the Filipinas he had dated in the last three years. And I mean, as fast as he could swipe, the whole time he's talking, I mean, I'm just seeing him like for a second, see one Filipina after another after another. And it's, it's him and her together. I mean, I'm, there's no doubt he's met and dated all these Filipinas. It must have been about a good hundred of them or so. And... So then he puts down the phone when I was like, wow, yeah, they're really pretty. You know, you met a lot of Filipinas. And he put down the phone and, and then he told me, he said, yeah, but why I dated so many Filipinas? And then he told me the story that he, when he first arrived in the Philippines, first arrived, he got settled in and he met this Filipina and they hit it off. And again, he's brand new to the Philippines and this is the first Filipina he meets. And, and they hit it off and they start dating and they get into a relationship for about six months. And he's just like, wow, she's got great character. She's loving. She's sweet. She's beautiful. She's everything he's ever been looking for. And he got, got to thinking about marrying her. And he rolled the idea by with some older expats who should, he's thinking, oh, well, I'll get their advice. They must know. And unfortunately, the advice he was given was, oh, no, no, no. You got to date around. Yeah, don't, don't marry the first Filipina you meet. You know, you, you got to go date around and date some other girls. Drop this one and start dating around and, and get the pick of the litter and blah, blah, blah. So that's what he did. You know, he broke up with her. Then he went out and realized, oh, wow, I can date. I can meet all these girls. And he started dating and dating and dating and dating. And he was actually a younger expat. He was about maybe 38 when I met him. And uh, so he got to the Philippines when he was about 35. And and then after he did about a year or so of just dating around and all these different Filipinas, he reached this point where he realized and he told me, he said, he goes, I just got tired of it. I got tired of meeting new ones and dealing with the drama and the stories and which ones are scammers and which ones are good, which ones are bad. And he, he thought to himself, well, when was I most happy? And he, he, he was like, man, that first Filipina was compared to all these other girls he had dated. That first Filipina was the one that that's what he was looking for. So he went back and hunted her down and she was already involved with another guy. And she was serious with the guy. She wasn't the type of girl that just flippantly got involved with somebody. She was in a serious relationship with this other guy. And she told him, sorry, but I've moved on found someone else. And that was his point of why he showed me those pictures. I keep looking for someone just like that and I can't find her. And, and I thought it was really just, I could see the break in his eyes. He, he, he was still looking. He still hadn't found her. You know, he was, he was going to continue on with his life in the Philippines. And that was his goal was to meet someone like the one that he let get away. And so I would say to end with this, if you find what you're looking for, hang on to it. Don't let the lure of I could do better, I could this or nitpick at them. I mean, if you if you really have found what you're looking for, even if it's the first Filipina you meet, 
crazy as that sounds, I mean, if, if you have vetted her out, spent a year with her, you know how she is. She's not a party girl. She's not a bar girl. She's not a boozer. She's not a cheater. She doesn't waste your money. She's honest. She's family oriented. She loves you like the center of her universe. If you have found the woman that you're looking for, keep her. Because I guarantee you, if you leave her and then you find another one, by some miracle, you find another unicorn that meets all of your desires and needs and wants. If you continue looking over the fence at what else is out there, you'll probably screw it up again. So just something to think about, something to keep in mind. Um, I know there's a lot of guys who, who meet wonderful women and they tell me, they go, well, gee, I'm just bored. It's like, I already know her. I, wanna, I, want, I want the freshness. I want the chase. I want the, the newness. And they give up a perfectly good girl that could have they could have had a happy life with. And my advice would be, if you've found what you were looking for, stay with that. You know, stay with that. All right. So, again, I hope this has been helpful in some way. And we'll talk later in the comments. <laughs>